I'm very excited to be able to talk to you guys today, um, <clears throat> partially because I grew up around here, and now a lot of people will tell you uh, when you go and preach to a place that you're close to where, you're, where you grew up nearby, you never tell them because uh, the prophet's without honor in his hometown. Uh, and that's somewhat true, but I went to Western, graduated in 97. Uh, I actually came to this church uh, probably in 92 uh, for a Milwaukee. Uh So I, I, it's been a long time and I've, I've hung out for a bit. Um, some people might know uh, my father uh, who uh, owned Living Water Christian Bookstore for a little while. So if you have an idea who he is, then you have no idea about me at all. <laughs> I'm teasing. My favorite part about coming to preach here is that this little uh, podium uh, is a lot smaller than the big podium that Pastor Ed gets to preach behind oh. today. <laughs> so that's kind of fun. <laughs> <clears throat> so um, it was over lunch that we actually did uh, have this conversation, and I mentioned it in Sunday school, but I'll, I'll quickly recap. Um, Pastor Ed was going on and on about how he wanted to do this communication study uh, and, and do it on Sunday mornings. And I said to him, oh, that sounds really good. Uh, you know, I've been going through some of those things. Uh, and my wife and I have been going through some of those things in our personal life recently. He goes, that's great. You should come and do it at my church. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> So uh, we, we made some plans, and uh, he, he also told me not to tell anyone uh, until we actually did it to make it more of a surprise. So if you're wondering why he's not here, you can blame him primarily. Uh, <laughs> but the thing is, is that um, the thing I want to talk to you today about is something that is uh, a very, uh, well, it's a very difficult subject because it reaches down to a very important point in our relationships with each other, and that is, when do I say something, and when do I not say something? It's a very difficult thing, a very difficult piece of wisdom to grab a hold of. How do I know when to say something? In fact, it's kind of important to know that, and some would even say, as James uh, in the scriptures would even say, it's a matter of life and death. I know that it was very difficult for me when I first started as a pastor um, because I got to know uh, one of the, the new people in my church. And uh, as I got to know him, I spent a lot of time with him the first month or two while I was there. Uh, he had gotten more and more despondent about what was going on in his life and more and more paranoid about how he could fix it. And he ended up taking his own life. And if you haven't been at a place for very long, and all of a sudden you're doing a funeral, how many times did I wonder, and how many times did I wind it back in my mind, did I say the right thing? Did I do the right thing? Did I talk to them when I should have talked to them? Did I do it right? It's a very difficult thing to, to ponder about those kinds of things, because it, it becomes to where you don't, you don't have the answer. But I do have, uh, and I'm going to be sharing with you today, some of the things that I learned when we should be quiet and when we should speak. And then when we do speak, what should we say? So the first thing here is when uh, should I be quiet? And, and I, just, uh, I have a few places in Scripture where uh, there's... Um, uh, some places where people were quiet and why. Uh, if you want to take a look at um, Revelation 8.1. Revelation 8.1. I'll, I'll be bouncing around a lot. Uh, so if you've been working on your sword drills, uh, that's good for you. Because we'll be uh, hitting quite a few different places in Scripture. The first one is this. Uh, Revelation 8.1. It says, When the Lamb opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. Now, this is a very profound silence because it was not just a couple chapters before this uh, that uh, John described the angel saying, uh, 
Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is full of His glory. And, they, and He says they never quit saying that. But here, they stopped. And the question is, why? Because it's kind of important to know when not to speak. Why do they say this? And I believe that they did it out of respect. They did it out of respect because God Himself, Jesus, was able to open the seventh seal. And He was able to take the scroll. He is worthy. And they showed him proper respect by giving the moment where he opened the deed to the heaven and earth by meeting it with silence. Am I showing proper respect? Is a good question to ask yourself when it's time to speak. Because sometimes it's appropriate to be quiet because it's disrespectful to speak. And all of heaven, the major multitudes that were surrounding the throne, when Jesus did his pivotal moment, they all stopped. They all gazed. And they all paid attention to what was going on. There's another passage out of one of my favorite books I mentioned again in Sunday school, but uh, here we have at uh, Proverbs, or sorry, Job 29. Uh, 21 through 25. Uh, that's Proverbs 23. Sorry, Job 29. Uh, 21 through 25. And, and Job is talking about when things used to go well for him, the kind of position that he had in society. And, and he said this: Men listened to me and waited and kept silence for my counsel. After I spoke, they did not speak again, and my word dropped upon them. They waited for me as the rain, and they opened their mouths as for the spring rain. I smiled on them when they had no confidence, and the light of my face they did not cast down. I chose their way, and sat as their chief, and I lived like a king among his troops, like one who comforts mourners. Job had a very high, respected place in his society. People would come and just listen to him, and wait for him to drop some nugget of truth. You might have seen a few people who are like that in our culture today, where uh, hundreds if not thousands of people will come and they'll listen to every little word that drops from their mouths and they'll be analyzing and thinking about it, asking questions about it, talking about it to each other. They'll do these kinds of things in, in rapture because of the respect that they have for the position or the wisdom that the person had accrued. It's important to listen. It's important to pay attention, especially when those we respect or those who are deserving of respect in particular have something to say. And that goes in with my second question of how I need to know when to be silent. The first one, or the second question, the first one is, am I showing proper respect? And the second one is, do I need to learn something? Do I need to learn something? It's important to be quiet when you're ready to learn. It's very easy for us to uh, carry on or to talk on about other things and miss our chance to hear the things that we should hear. And that's why it goes along very well with the respect issue. I, do I respect? Am I giving proper respect? And secondly, do I need to learn something? In Genesis uh, 24, 21, I'll turn there, uh, but it's the place where Abraham's servant is looking for a bride for I, uh, Isaac, he's looking for a bride, and he sat there after he had prayed, and he watched in silence to see whether or not God had given him success, to learn whether or not God was truly with him. And sometimes we have to be quiet, we have to be silent in order to hear what God is showing us, what he's trying to teach us. In Isaiah, <clears throat> Uh, chapter 41 is a really uh, great passage about this as well. Talking about how the nations need to be quiet, uh, particularly um, those who are on the coastlands. And so it says in verse uh, 1 in chapter 41 of Isaiah, Listen to me in silence, O coastlands. Let the peoples now renew their strength. Let them approach and let them speak. Let us together draw near for judgment. Who stirred up one from the coast who victory meets at every step. He gives up nations before him so that he tramples kings underfoot. He makes them like dust with his sword, like driven stubble with his bow. He pursues them to pass on safely by paths his feet have not trod. 
who has performed and done this, the calling of generations from the beginning. I, the Lord, the first, and with the last, I am He. So God is telling the peoples, it's telling the nations, listen, hear, understand, be quiet. And that's where that passage in, in uh, Psalms, uh, I believe it's 46, it says, Be still and know that I am God. And it's right in the passage where it's talking about how the nations are raging, how they're, they're up in turmoil. God says, Be still, like He did to the royal waves when He was here on earth. Do I need to learn something? Should I not pay attention to what's going on instead of talking and talking? And talking. Another thing to avoid uh, is to avoid repeating a slogan. So the qu third question is this. The first one, of course, is am I showing proper respect? The second one, do I need to learn something? The third one is, am I repeating a slogan to avoid dealing with the situation? Am I repeating a slogan? Why, why did I put it that way? Well, in Jeremiah, uh, there was a time where the prophets and the priests were doing what was wrong. What were they doing? They were repeating endlessly to one another, peace, peace, when there was no peace. They were lying to one another, using a slogan, a thing to give them a measure of comfort, rather than dealing with the actual situation, that God was bringing judgment, that God was bringing war. And they were unable to learn the lessons they could have learned in order to even save their lives or anyone else's. Because all they wanted to do is repeat the slogan. Now, I don't have to be uh, very attuned with uh, everyone here in the audience to know that you heard a lot of slogans. And you might have even said a lot of the same things over and over again. But the thing that we also need to recognize is that we need to be careful about repeating the same kind of thing over and over without dealing with the, the situation at hand. It's so easy to get caught up in party rhetoric, or get caught up in what the media is telling you, or get caught up even with the culture and the way that it pursues things. We need to remember that if someone is repeating something over and over and over again, that they may indeed be not listening at all. If we want to learn, if we want to show proper respect for the God who is going to teach us, we have to avoid just saying slogans or just saying cliches. Fourth question that we should do when we want to know whether or not we should be quiet. The first one is, am I showing proper respect? The second one is, do I need to learn something? The fourth, third one is, Am I repeating a slogan? And the fourth one is, is this an excuse? There's so many people who will grumble, who will complain, that who will offer excuses. Moses was not absent from this. Neither was Gideon. Men who, when they heard what God wanted, they asked for signs. They asked for, uh, you know, are you sure? I, I don't really want to do this. In fact, uh, one of my uh, my favorite ones is the very honest Moses when he said in Exodus chapter 4. Exodus chapter 4. He says, verse 13, he says, Oh my Lord, please send someone else. <laughs> he already complained about how he couldn't speak well. He already complained that... Uh, you know, he, he was separated, that he, he wasn't there anymore, but God was sending him to do it. And God said, who made your tongue? Are you just offering an excuse? Are you looking to just get out from underneath the truth? Are you looking to just avoid responsibility? Then maybe you should be quiet about that and just get to work. There is a time when we should be quiet. Here's another one. Is my heart right? Is my heart right before God? Jesus, in particular, mentions this one in Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12, verses 34 through 37. He's talking to the Pharisees. 
anybody needed a little lecture about what their heart was doing, it was the Pharisee. <clears throat> Is my heart right? Verse 34 says this. You brood of vipers, how can you speak good when you are evil? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The good person has, out of his good treasure, brings forth good. And the evil person, out of his evil treasure, brings forth evil. I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will give account for every careless word they speak. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. It's a serious thing to speak forward. It's a serious thing to say something to someone else. But you know that what comes out of a pure wonderful spring is good water and what comes out of a dirty nasty hole in the ground comes dirty and nasty things so if you're wondering whether or not you should say something about or to someone is my heart in the right place have i been made right before god have i confessed my sin you know we serve a god of reconciliation <coughs> We serve a God who brings together that which has been alienated. We serve a God who, when though we were his enemies, he brought us together with him and he showed us how we should do that. I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but the thing is that we need to make sure that we've got it right with him before we get it right with others. Is my heart in the right place? I have a sixth one. First is, am I showing proper respect? Second, do I need to learn something? Am I repeating a slogan? Is this an excuse? Is my heart right? Finally, and not finally, I got one more after this. <laughs> is what I'm going to say useful? Is what I'm going to say useful? And this comes straight out of Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4, 29. where it says this let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths but only such as is good for building up as fits the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear that's Ephesians 4 14, or 29 and the thing is is that God is trying to help us know when we should speak by saying, think about what you're doing, and if something is going to come out of your mouth that's not useful to anybody, maybe you just shouldn't. Let no unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. And, and your mom's probably told you that, right? You can't say anything good. Don't say. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> But who knew that she got it from such a good place as Ephesians chapter 4, right? <laughs> but that, that's, that's the point. We don't need to say something when we don't have something good to say. And finally, am I drawing needless attention to myself through what I say? Some people just like to talk. They like to say things so that they can get people to pay more attention to them. They don't have anything in particular to say. In fact, they may be very good at saying nothing, but all they want is attention for themselves, and that's a very poor way to speak. It's very important to recognize what God has to say about that kind of a thing, and, and this is what it says here in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2. It says, first of all, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people, for kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. This is good and pleasing in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. So, what, where's, what, what were you just talking about, Pastor Ben? How does this fit what you were just talking about? Uh, he says we should give prayer 
supplication, and such. For those in authority, that we might live quietly. That we might live a quiet life. That we don't make unnecessary ways. Now, it's not to say that we shouldn't speak. In fact, it actually tells us to praise God for these things. We're supposed to be uh, vocal in our, in our talks with God. But our purpose of being vocal in our talks with God and, and our prayers and our supplications is so that we can live quietly. Not so that we might be made much of, that they might pay a lot of attention to us. There's many places in Scripture where it talks about how it is good, a wonderful thing, to live a quiet life. So with all of these reasons not to speak, when should I speak? <laughs> I have a couple of places where we should speak. Uh, first of all, God must be praised. God must be praised. He's done wonderful things. If we hold it in, what the very stones will cry out. The Scripture is very clear. Jesus said to his disciples, when I speak to you in private, proclaim on the rooftop. So there is a time to speak, and when it's a time to speak, one of the good things to say is to praise the name of the Lord. What's another thing that we need to do when we sh should speak? When should we speak? Well, first, or secondly, wrong should be corrected. Wrong should be corrected. There's a place that, uh, and this is really the place where is the heart of the scripture that I wanted to get to. It's out of Psalm 39. And the reason why this is such an important place and it's such an important scripture is because I don't know about you, but I have, and my wife has, had very serious issues sometimes bringing things up that meant something to us because we felt like we needed to be quiet about it. Like it wasn't that big of a deal. That maybe I should just, you know, love overlooks a multitude of sins. Maybe I should just keep this one on the down low. Maybe I shouldn't speak when something is wrong that's happening because it's not my place or maybe they won't listen or maybe it's not the right time and it just piles up and piles up and piles up inside. If you've ever felt that way, let me read for you out of the psalm. 39 verse 1. I said, I will guard my way that I may not sin with my tongue. I will guard my mouth with a muzzle as long as the wicked are in my presence. I was mute and silent. I held my peace to no avail. And my distress grew worse. My heart became hot within me. As I mused, the fire burned. And then I spoke with my tongue. When you bottle it up and you don't share how you feel, eventually it hurts. <coughs> forward and you say things that you weren't meaning to say. Out of all that time I spent looking at when we should be quiet, there is a time to speak your heart. In particular when there's something that went wrong. When there's something that is wrong, it's okay to call it out. In fact, if you don't, your distress will grow worse. How do I take care of that? What do I do? What, uh, but I'm so afraid about these things. How, how do I talk to someone about that, that insignificant thing? It's so insignificant. How do, I, how do I bring that out? How do I talk to that person about these things? Well, first we need to recognize that fear is not an option. You can't be quiet out of fear. That's the wrong reason to be quiet. Out of all the reasons that we had why we should be quiet, none of them were fear-based. The closest thing we got to was respect. 
It's okay to respect someone and keep quiet about something, but it's not okay to fear someone and not say something. Fear is not an option. In Jeremiah, again, uh, chapter 1, Jeremiah was a young prophet. God said, I'm going, to, I'm going to give you a lot of words to say. But he also sent him along with this message. In Jeremiah 1, verses 7 and 8, where it says this. The Lord said to me, do not say I'm only a youth. For to all to whom I send you, you shall go. And whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, declares the Lord. In Matthew, it talks about how when two or three are gathered, the Lord is in the midst of them. Do you know why they gather? If you look at the context, they're there to confront someone else about their sin and try to reconcile the relationship. The Lord is there in the midst of them. You don't have to be afraid to call out something wrong. You should speak. You should exhort. You should encourage. Now I don't mean that over the next week, take out your battle axe and polish it up and go after everybody that's ever wronged you. That's not what I'm saying. Right? That's not how it works. What we should, though, do is, in cautious, heartfelt reflection, to build bridges, not to sever relationships. We say what we feel to one another. And it can be a beautiful and wonderful thing. But only when we press aside the fear of coming close to other people to tell them how we really feel and share it. Because the really good relationships will grow from this. And the ones that are fake will fall to pieces. A lot of people don't want fake relationships to fall to pieces. They have a lot of measure of comfort in them. But the one way to get them to go from the superficial to the heartfelt is to be able to say how you feel. And if they're your friends, they will hear you. What should I say? When your heart is overflowing, when your distress is increasing, before it blows up, deal with it in the right time, in the right way, and help it come to a conclusion so that you can draw together. Of all the things we should do, we should remember James 3.11 says that blessing should come out of me. That, that, that's a really fun verse in particular. Because <laughs> we're not looking to end things. We're looking to build with the end. And James 3.11, James 3 has a lot to say about the tongue. It would be not really good to avoid it altogether. So what it says here in verse 11, it says, Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and salt water? No. <laughs> so what does that mean? Pour out of you freshness. Out of the same mouth should not come both blessing and cursing. So let's bless. Let's care. Let's talk. And when you talk to someone, when you talk to them, and you uh, deal with them individually, you can rebuild those relationships to be stronger than they've ever been. Secondly, you should pour out your heart to God. You should pour out your heart to God. In 1 Samuel chapter 1, it talks about how uh, Hannah, who had been distressed because the other lady in the house kept bothering her and teasing her and bullying her and belittling her. And she went to the temple of God and she poured out her heart to the Lord so much that the attending priest thought she was drunk. He says, get out of here with your drunkenness. And she says, I'm not drunk. I was pouring out my heart to God. And the priest said, may God give you what you 
for God. Remember that if we pour out our heart to God, and we tell Him how we feel, that can really, really help eliminate this whole business of bottling up and exploding. And finally, the Lord will teach you what to say. He specifically says it to Moses that I will teach you what to say in Exodus 4.15, but it's not any different in the New Testament. We'll flip over to uh, 1 Timothy again. As we get come to a close. God will teach you what to say. Um, and right here in, in 1 Timothy 4.12, he says this. Let no one despise you for your youth or inexperience, but set the believers an example in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. How can I set an example for someone else? Don't they know who I am? <laughs> don't, they, don't they know what I've done? Or maybe I don't want them to know who I am and what I've done. But the Lord, as we spend time with Him, not only sanctifies us, but He grants us wisdom. That's why He says, don't, don't prepare in advance what you're going to say before the trial, because I will give you the word. If you want to know what to say, spend time with God. Be quiet before Him. Listen to Him. Spend time hearing what He has to tell you. Allow Him to purify you from the inside out. Allow Him to give you that strength to not succumb to fear, but to share what needs to be said. And then don't overly worry about what you will say. But be concerned about your life your relationship with God. Seek ye first that kingdom of God. And all these things will be added to you as well. I have some considerations for you to think about as we close. The first one is this. Am I willing to be silent? Am I willing to listen? what God will teach me. Do I have enough respect for Him to do so? And secondly, the one more question, am I willing to say what needs to be said? There's another passage in Scripture I really enjoy. And Paul says, the slave in Christ should be as God's free man. And the free in Christ should be as God's slave. What he's saying there is, is that very often there's a problem on both ends of the road. And here, it's not that different. So many people are really good at talking, and so it's really hard for them to be silent. And there's a great many people as well who are really not so good at talking, and so it's hard for them to speak. But God asks both of us in its proper time. As Ecclesiastes 3, 7 said, there is a time to speak and a time to remain silent. Are you willing to step forward from where you're comfortable to do the will of God as Christ did when he went from the garden to the cross? If you are willing to follow the same path as Christ to do that which doesn't come easily. Jesus himself sweat great drops of blood to follow the work of God. And we saw that example being willing to do the same. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. And every one of us have been given one. God has given us a great opportunity to be a well of blessing for others. If we will listen to Him, learn what to say, and speak when it's time. Let's pray.